there, there's really two main things that determine the patterns for reactions. The two main things that determine the patterns for reactions are electronics and sterics. Electronics and sterics. Electronics is like, do we want to put the carbocation on the more or the less substituted carbon? Where is the charge the most stable? And sterics is trying to keep bulky things away from steric hindrance. Well, this is not a case where electronics is very important because we never formed a carbocation. Because this was a concerted reaction, we never formed a carbocation, so the electronics wasn't important. We didn't need to form the more stabilized carbocation because we're not forming a carbocation at all. That's why it's important to remember that this is concerted, so we can see that we're not forming the carbocation. Well, if, then if electronics are not important, it's probably the sterics that are important. Those are our two big considerations. That was the pattern for SN1 and SN2, right? SN1 forms a carbocation, so the important uh, consideration there is electronics, stabilizing the carbocation. But SN2 is concerted. It doesn't form a carbocation, and therefore the big obstacle to SN2 is steric hindrance. So those are the two big considerations to watch out for. It's important to think like that because remember, you can expect to see some situations on the test you've never seen before. The test is supposed to give you things you've never seen before and ask you to make a prediction. We should reach into your tool bag and ask, is electronics important here? And if the electronics is not important, then it's probably the steric hindrance that's important. So it makes sense that the boron would end up on the less substituted carbon for steric hindrance reasons. Now this step here is called hydroboration. Hydroboration. This is the hydroboration step. That's a very logical name because we added a hydrogen and this boron group. So that's a logical name, hydroboration. Just like before we've seen halo hydrogenation when we add a halogen and a hydrogen, or hydrogenation when we're adding two hydrogens. We could stop right here, but usually we're not trying to produce things with boron. So we'd likely to go on to the next step where we're adding H2O2 and HO minus. What's the name of HO minus? Now, it would be an alcohol if it was a neutral oxygen. This is hydroxide. This is just hydroxide. Hydroxide is not really alcohol, it's just uh, hydroxide. Here's the HOOH. Have we talked about what does it mean if you have two O's? Peroxide? Yeah, that's a peroxide. This hydrogen is peroxide? There you go. This is hydrogen peroxide. So, peroxide, so an oxide is when you have an O minus. Peroxide is when you have two oxygens. So this is two oxygens, so it's peroxide. And to be specific, it's hydrogen peroxide. And these are the reagents that we usually use for this next step. Let's see what's going to happen here. We're not going to actually go through the whole mechanism here. I'm just going to show you that ultimately what happens. The result of adding the hydrogen peroxide and hydroxide is simply to replace the boron with OH. This simply replaces the boron with OH. So you take the hydroxide and you entirely remove the boron from the two hydrogens? That's right. You simply replace the BH2 with OH. Now, we're not going to go through the whole mechanism for this. It actually turns out that this OH came from the hydrogen peroxide. It didn't actually come from the hydroxide, although as a memory aid, you could kind of think that it came from the hydroxide. But just as a mechanical process, we're just replacing the boron group with an alcohol group. And this is if you want it on the less substituted carbon, then, if you're making an alcohol. Right, exactly. If you want the alcohol on the less substituted carbon. So did this end up being Markovnikov or anti Markovnikov? Why do we need an anti narcotic way of making an alcohol? Because a few minutes ago we were reviewing the hydration reaction, and the hydration reaction with sulfuric acid was a method for making a Markovnikov alcohol. So now we have two different methods for making alcohols, one that's Markovnikov and one that's anti narcotic It's oftentimes important to learn these reactions in pairs so you can see that they're alternatives to each other. 
What would have happened if we treated this with sulfuric acid in water? Well, we would have gotten an alcohol where the OH group is on the more substituted carbon. We just reviewed that reaction previously. But here it's anti Markovnikov, so the OH is on the less substituted carbon. Why did it end up on the, more on the less substituted carbon? Because it ended up replacing the boron. And why was the boron on the less substituted carbon steric hindrance? So that, we're not going to go through the whole mechanism here, but you should be able to explain what we just went through. The boron ends up on the more substituted carbon. Less, right? Boron ends up on the less substituted carbon because of steric hindrance, and then the OH is simply replacing the boron. So that's also on the less substituted carbon. Now, again, we're not going to go through the whole mechanism, and even already I've kind of simplified this mechanism. Because in actuality, this boron would actually go on to attack, I think, two other alkenes before you actually put in the hydrogen peroxide. That actually doesn't turn out to be too important for predicting the product, so we won't spend our time on that. The complete mechanism is in the second language book, and the complete mechanism is in your textbook, and the mechanism is in the handout uh, as well. You actually should review that mechanism. You might be tested on that whole mechanism but it's not the most high yield use of our time. The important thing to spend our time on is predicting the products. So here we've seen how and to predict the products. Does THF do anything important or not? What do you think the role of the THF is here? That's the solvent. Yeah. That's the solvent. So what does it do? Well, it, it does actually play an important role in solving uh, this reagent, but it's not going to play any role in our mechanism. Okay. However, your instructor does like you to know the solvents, so you should know that this is the usual solvent here. By the way, this is the structure of THF. It's a cyclic five-membered ether. What's, its, what's that stand for? Tetrahydrofuran. Okay. I suppose it's tetra because there's four carbons here. I don't really know where the hydro comes from. Mm -hmm. And furan means five-membered ring. But anyway, you just kind of have to have memorized that THF is this structure here. This is oftentimes a good aprotic solvent. This is a good aprotic solvent. And the lone pairs on the oxygen here can be good at stabilizing your reagents. Remember, this boron is pretty unhappy because it has an incomplete octet. But it can be stabilized by uh, receiving, uh, by uh, sharing electrons with the oxygen here. It would be, uh, in solution, I think they would say it's coordinated to these oxygens. We don't need to get into the details of that. But we should just memorize this is the appropriate solvent for that first step. So the important thing is this is a way of making an anti-Markovnikov alcohol. By the way, is this, do the hydrogen and the boron add sin or anti? Do the hydrogen and the boron add sin or anti? Why, 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 why would we think it has to be sin based on this? Because they're connected. Yeah, and because they're adding concertedly. Mm -hmm. Since they're both adding at the same time, they should both be coming in from the same direction. If the, boron, if the boron is coming in from above, it seems like the hydrogen has to be coming in from above because otherwise, how could they both be coming from the same molecule? That turned out not to be important here because we didn't form any stereocenters. Since we're not forming any stereocenters, it didn't matter whether this was sin or anti. But if we were forming stereocenters, it could be quite important whether this is sin or anti. So not only is it important to remember that this is anti-Markovnikov, we should remember that it's a sin addition. Notice that anti-Markovnikov is not the same thing as anti-addition. Those are two different things. This is anti-Markovnikov, but it's not an anti-addition. It's a sin addition. And whatever the stereochemistry is here, you're going to keep that stereochemistry when the OH comes in. We is, can't, is the Markovnikov regiochemistry, and the sin and the anti is stereochemistry? That's very well put. Yes, that's a very good way to describe that. That's right. Anti-Markovnikov and Markovnikov are the regiochemistry, because they describe what region the uh, atoms are going to end up on. Are they going to end up on the more or the less substituted carbons? Here, the oxygen ended up on the less substituted carbons. That's regiochemistry. Sin and anti-addition is stereochemistry. You're right, because it describes what direction they're coming in, the arrangement in space. So that, that's, a, that's, that's a very good way to put that. So the point I wanted to make is that the hydrogen and the boron here are coming in from the same direction. And then, even though we're not going to go through the mechanism, you should know that when the OH replaces the boron, it still ends up in this, having come in from the same direction as the boron came in. We would say this step happens with retention of configuration. This step happens with retention of configuration. So just as we should think about the hydrogen and the boron as having come in sin, we should think it's as if the hydrogen and the oxygen came in sin as well. Just like the hydrogen and the boron are, in a sense, on the same side, the hydrogen and the oxygen are also on the same side. 
because we know why the boron is on the same side as the oxygen, because they came in at the same time, and then we'll just memorize that when we replace this with an OH, we have retention of configuration here. So this will be a syn anti-Markovnikov addition. <laughs>